Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a collab with Gwendolyn Kenzinger and her YouTube channel is called Beautiful Books by Gwen. And I'm really excited to do this collab because Gwen was actually the first, I'm pretty sure, the first person to send me pictures of a DIY that she did from a video on my channel, which is so cool. And so we've been chatting on the internet for a while now. I think the video, um, it was my um, DIY Pez Head Boutonniere video, um, the boutonnieres that I made for our wedding. So that was like, I want to say the second video that I ever posted on this channel. So that was really cool. And yeah, Gwen has a really awesome YouTube channel where she reviews books and does a lot of other amazing stuff. So definitely check her out. And yeah, let's hop right in. So our collab is going to be books about minimalism. So Gwen came up with this idea and I thought it was a really great idea because I'm always interested in the material that people read, especially pertaining to minimalism, because there's so many great books out there, but sometimes it can feel kind of overwhelming, so it's great to get recommendations from friends on what's really helped them. The first book that I read when I was first getting into minimalism a year-ish ago was, let's see if you guys can guess it, the life-changing magic of tidying up. Okay, don't leave this video yet. I know this book, people either really love it or they really don't like it. But for me, it really helped me take that first leap into the idea of being able to be a minimalist. I didn't think I could ever do it because I grew up um, always shopping and I was kind of a pack rat growing up and I just never thought that owning less stuff would make me happy but it turns out it does make me happy and I guess what I had thought before I started really diving in and doing research was that minimalists just didn't have anything and sure there are some out there that really don't have very many things but what I guess I need to say is that I had it backwards and minimalism isn't about not having anything, it's about having the important things. Making room for the important things I guess is a better way to say it. So it's about making space for the things that you really love, the things that really serve you, and getting rid of the stuff that you don't need and you don't love and you don't use. So all that being said, I'll kind of talk about a couple things from this book that really helped me start the decluttering process. The first thing that Marie Kondo kind of recommends is to tackle categories over rooms. So that was something that I had honestly never done before. When I would try to get rid of stuff or clean up, even when I lived at home before Nick and I lived together, I would just, you know, I would say like, okay, this table, I'm gonna declutter this table today and it's gonna be great. And then things would start piling up again because I wasn't really tackling the real problem, which was, that I had too many of a certain thing and I didn't need so many, you know, pens or so many notebooks or whatever, you know what I mean? So I never really tackled the source of the issue, I just would try to clean up per area. Tackling a category as opposed to a room is really helpful because you're looking at all of the pens you have or all of the notebooks or all the nail polish and you're able to really evaluate what you have, what you use and love, and what you don't. The next thing that I learned from this book that really helped me was Marie Kondo talks about respecting your clothes and she goes as far as to say think about how your socks feel when they're balled up and thrown into your closet and I feel like that's a little out there. If you really just stop and think like okay are my clothes really going to last as long when I am storing them the way that I'm storing them. Is the elastic really going to stay stretching my socks when I have them all folded, like balled up and stretched out and stored in my closet? No, honestly, they're probably not going to last as long. If you actually think about it, it's logical that if you just lay your socks flat or if you just fold them in half without balling them up, they probably are going to last longer. And I actually don't have this book to physically show you guys because I got it as an audiobook and I actually still go back and listen to it sometimes when I'm feeling like I need a little bit of inspiration because it was really a great read and it also really helped me to stay mindful about things that I'm bringing into my home because really you're not going to stay minimized unless you think about what you're bringing into your house. 
The next book I'm going to share with you guys is Zero Waste Home by Bea Johnson. And I think I mentioned this in a favorites video. I don't really do favorites videos anymore. But I mentioned it in maybe like a summer favorites video a while ago. And I still really like this book a lot. I thought about buying it as an audiobook, but I was interested in getting the physical copy because I knew that there were a lot of recipes and stuff in it, so I wanted to have it as kind of a reference book, and that really is what it's been for me. There are a lot of personal stories in this book, and then also, like I said, lots of recipes. There's everything from you know, how to make your own zero waste mascara, to furniture polish, to mustard, and so many other things. When I have a question, I just look in the index and usually there's an answer in there for me. And I know I've talked about this a little bit before, but I am far from living a full zero waste lifestyle, but I do try to avoid plastic as much as I can. I feel like the conventional normal stuff is like over here, and Bea Johnson is way over here, and I'm kind of like right here. I'm not all the way here yet, but I'm far from over here. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but it's just a really great book. Like I keep saying, it's a great reference and I love reading her stories and just getting inspired by her. Also, I just think she's really cool. She lives in San Francisco. She's really modern. She does her thing and she's French, which is basically the epitome of cool to me. So if you're looking for just a really practical, guide on how to reduce your waste and live a more intentional, minimal lifestyle, I would highly recommend Zero Waste Home. So I want to just end this video by saying the idea of minimalism can sometimes be really overwhelming. There are some people that count their items and feel like that's what makes them a minimalist. They can fit everything they own in a backpack. That's definitely not me. I don't think that'll ever be me, but I'm okay with that. That's not kind of what my end goal is. Minimalism to me means being conscious of what I'm bringing into my home, not consuming just to consume, and valuing my family and friends and experiences over material things. That's what works for me. It may look totally different for you, but that's fine. We don't need to all have the same, you know, story or journey or lifestyle. You know, it's just interesting to see kind of different people's perspectives and respect them for what they decide to do. I hope this video was helpful for you guys in some way. I wanted it to be interesting, but I also didn't want to try to find a bunch of new books that weren't, you know, really what helped me in the beginning of starting this journey. So I hope you guys appreciated that. Make sure to check out Gwen's channel and subscribe to her. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.